It's the dawn of a new day being a paleontologist. Now, being a paleontologist is a lot like being a detective, with a case millions of years old. Some weeks ago, fishermen up in Broome discovered a new set of dinosaur footprints, and it's our job to find out what was going on on this day millions of years ago. The case we're going to be investigating today is based on real-life discoveries found in Broome, the United States, and Italy. If we were to make this journey during the Cretaceous period, then we'd be greeted with a very different landscape. The Gondwanan supercontinent was breaking up, and towering conifer forests covered much of Australia. Broome was a river plain, opening up into tidal deltas and brackish lagoons, conditions perfect for dinosaurs. If you went back 130 million years to this very spot, then you'd be crushed by a 40-ton brontosaurus. We know that because I'm standing in its footprint. Preserving dinosaur footprints is very similar to making a caramel slice. Firstly, we need to have the right base. If the ground is too soft, then the footprints will collapse in on themselves, not preserving any sort of detail. Whereas if it's too hard, then the tracks won't form at all. Fortunately, the mud flats of broom and my short crust pastry mix have just the right consistency. Next, we need to bake the prints to ensure that they are as hard as possible. This doesn't turn them into stone just yet, but it does prevent the next stages in preservation from destroying the prints entirely. For dinosaur prints in mud, this can take anywhere from a couple of days to a few months. However, for my short crust, it's going to take us just 20 minutes at 120 degrees Celsius in my oven. After being baked in the hot sun, we now need to preserve our tracks. In nature, that happens by covering them in a layer of ash or mud. But for us, we're going to be using some caramel. A layer of chocolate tops it off. Here is a cross section of our situation. As hundreds of meters of sediment build up, the pressure beneath increases, crushing out any remaining water from the lower layers and causing dissolved minerals to recrystallize. This forms a solid layer of rock. Over time, erosion removes the upper layers, revealing the dinosaur footprints beneath. This beach is a hive of dinosaur activity. So far, researchers have found about 21 different track types from a number of different families. Our set of prints seem to come from three individuals of two different species, but which ones? To find out, I've come to the Melbourne Museum. This is their dinosaur walk, but for today, it's going to be a police lineup for the world's oldest crime. Here is a photograph of one of our prints. As you can see, it has three large toes. We're looking for someone with similar structures. Perhaps it's Dinoisis. However, Dinoisis literally means big claw. And as you can see, this picture doesn't have any claws in it. Tarbosaurus, however, closely related to the T-Rex, is looking a bit more suspicious. So what about this print then? It doesn't have any obvious toes or claws. So instead, we're going to have to infer some other properties based on its rather weird structure. Modern elephants have some very similar tracks from rounded feet used to spread their weight over a large area. Whatever made these prints must also be similarly huge. From our fossils, it looks like it could be a brontosaurus. Fossils can tell us what dinosaurs looked like but only their footprints can show us how they behaved. These footprints must have been made by Mother Brontosaurus and her calf. We know that because we can see their footprints traveling together. From other track sites, we also know that the Tarbosaurus hunted alone because its footprints crisscross randomly along the landscape. By measuring distances between each of the prints and working out how different forces were orientated based on how deep they go, we can add another layer of understanding. At the beginning, our Tarbosaurus tracks are all really close together, suggesting that it was walking slowly. Then the spacing increases dramatically. It breaks out into a sprint. It's at this point that all three of the tracks disappear. Now this could be because they're abducted by aliens, but given that that's quite unlikely, I think that mother nature might have removed our tracks. The constant ebb and flow of the second largest tide in the southern hemisphere, in addition to regular cyclones, means that these footprints are constantly being eroded away. Visitors brought in by cruise ships or by ever more regular passenger flights are slowly grinding them into dust. 
Fortunately, our tracks are actually suffering from the opposite issue. They're covered by a thin layer of rock. A strong cyclone has torn through the area, revealing a new set of footprints. Here we can see all three dinosaurs converging on the same spot of ground. Perhaps there was a lake here, or maybe a source of food. However, I still think we're missing something important from our scene. Rather than just waiting for another storm to reveal the final set of track prints, paleontologists might one day be able to use ground penetrating radar to spot them even before they've been revealed naturally. This technique is based on the propagation and reflection of electromagnetic waves through different densities of rock. This system is more typically used to map subsurface features, such as cables and pipes, but has recently been applied to archaeological sites. Here is a depth profile on which the domed roof of a buried crypt can be seen. This other survey shows an Italian sunflower field in which the fossilized remains of early dugong were found. While we're going to need to wait some time before ground penetrating radar becomes powerful enough to detect subtle differences in rock densities, when we do, we might see something like this. By interpreting these dark red patches as the mother brontosaurus's footprints and the smaller yellow ones as the ones from her calf, we can get a full picture of the situation. A mother brontosaurus and her calf were walking along the banks of a river, with a tarbosaurus following along parallel. Catching sight of the pair, it turns and swiftly runs to catch up with them. This is where they get into a fight. The mother brontosaurus is fortunately able to protect her daughter using her massive bulk, allowing the two to escape to live another day. If perhaps the soil conditions had been just a little bit different, then instead of finding these footprints, instead we may have found the crushed remains of a Tarbosaurus, with no idea how they got there. It is only through combining our understanding of both preservation types, in which a full image of a land before time can be constructed. This has been James Dingley from the Atomic Frontier. Keep looking up.